Jeopardy! Please welcome our contestants. Player one. Hey, hey. Yeah. Player two. Hey, yeah. Player three. <laughs> and now, here is the host of Jeopardy, Alex Trebek. Thank you, Johnny Gilbert. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Let's take you right now into the Jeopardy round. Clues are worth $200 to $1,000 in these categories. Flowers. Missing links. Museums. The southernmost nation. The founding fathers. And musicals opening numbers. Player one, you start. Write up your blank oop. It's player one. Player one, pick again. Hi-o blank wedding anniversary. Player one. Right. You again, player one. Break the blank of America. Let's hear it, player one. Whoa! Right. You get to pick again, player one. Whoa! And so it's the Daily Double. And you have the lead. How much are you going to wager, player one? And the clue. Fall by the blank in. Here's the correct response. Wayside. You again, player one. News blank photography. The correct response is flash. You get to pick again, player one. India, Indonesia, Iran. Player two. Oh. No, that's not right. Anyone else care to try to come up with a correct response? Yes, player one. Yes. Please pick again, player one. Nepal, Nicaragua, Norway. Let's hear it, player one. Select again. Syria, Suriname, Sweden. It's player two. <laughs> Great, you're back into it now. Player two, you're in command of the board as we continue, right? Portugal, Papua New Guinea, Pakistan. 
Player one? Anyone else care to try to come up with a correct response? Here's the response we were looking for. Papua New Guinea. Select again. Mongolia. Malta. Malawi. Here's the correct response. Malawi. You get to pick again, player two. In early April of 1775, William Dawes, Samuel Prescott, and this man rode to warn patriots to move military stores from Concord. Here's what we wanted. Paul Revere. Select again. Three years after writing the Declaration of Independence, he succeeded Patrick Henry as Virginia governor. Here's the correct response. Thomas Jefferson. Player two, back to you. On July 3rd, 1776, he wrote to his wife Abigail that the colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states. It's player two. Yeah! That's correct. Select again. Let's go over to Jimmy. A 1775 letter from this founding father to the Pennsylvania Journal is thought to have inspired the Don't Tread on Me flag. Player three? Oh. That's not bad. Any other takers? Here's the response we were looking for. Benjamin Franklin. Player two, you pick again, please. In public good, this pamphleteer called for Virginia to cede land needed to form a strong central government. The correct response is Thomas Paine. Player two, back to you. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Yes, player three? <laughs> hey, you're right. Where do we begin, player three? All that jazz. The correct response is Chicago. Select again. Good morning, Baltimore. Okay, player two. No, that's not right. Anyone else care to try to come up with a correct response? Here's the correct response. Hairspray. Select again. Willkommen. Yes, player two. Aww. Nope. Anyone else want to hazard a guess on this? Yes, player three. Yeah. Hey, you're right. <laughs> on the plus side again. You get to pick again, player three. Move. You're stepping on my heart. Player two. Good. Back on the plus side. 
All right, let's get back into this. Player two has control. Holding reserves through winter, these globular underground buds let flowers like Narcissus bloom early. Okay, player three. Oh. Anyone else? Here's the correct response. Bulbs. You get to pick again, player two. This large group of flowering plants attracts serious devotees like those who pay $10,000 for one Peruvian plant. It's player three. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Player three, start us. The great men of France, circa 1780, are immortalized in the Grand Homme Gallery of this museum. Yes, player one? Anyone else want to hazard a guess on this? It's player three. Good yeah! for you! <laughs> Select again. The highlight of Argentina's National History Museum in this city is Candido Lopez's historical canvases. Okay, player one. Good. Back on the plus side. Where do we begin, player one? This Mayflower of the Buttercup family has a C version, too. Here's the correct response. The anemone. Player one, you pick... A bouquet of a dozen sink foils ought to have a total of this many petals. Here's the correct response. 60. Select again. L. vulgari is the oxide type of this common flower. Let's hear it, player three. Woo! Is correct. <laughs> a lot of clues, a lot of categories, player three. Make us all right, here with the clue is Jimmy. New York's Museum of Modern Art exhibits paintings that feature this technique in which tiny dots of color seem to blend together. Here's the correct response. Pointillism. Player three, pick again. Works by Titian, Raphael, and others sold by the USSR to Andrew Mellon became the core of this DC museum. Let's hear it, player three. Yes. <laughs> and now the thousand dollar clue. The Athenaeum in Hartford, Connecticut bears the name of this founder. No relation to Longfellow. It's player three. Correct. <laughs> 
Triple Jeopardy round will begin right after this. We start the Double Jeopardy categories with this one. Did you plan it that way? Word origins. Somewhere. The Fabulous Fifties. Literary Great Escapes. And Historic Women. Player one, you start. This ground meat sandwich gets its name from a German port city. Let's hear it, player one. Anyone else? Here's the correct response. A hamburger. This wood-eating insect gets its name from the Latin for wood-eating worm. Okay, player one. Yes, you've got some money again. Player one, you pick again, please. This word for a kind of land mass comes from a word meaning to contain. Player one. Player one, you pick again, please. This highest natural singing voice for women is Italian for what is above. Let's hear it, player one. That's it. Player one, choose again. Yeah. Answer, one of the daily doubles. You're tied with player three. So, what are you? Player one, please select your wager. Here is your daily double clue. This term for a leading character of a literary work comes from the Greek for first combatant. Here's the correct response. Protagonist. Player one, choose again. This strike slip fault that runs through California is named for a lake that's in the rift. We're talking about San Andreas. We return to you, player one. We are volunteering the information that Klingman's Dome is the highest point in this state.
Let's hear it, player two. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> player two, make a selection, please, as we continue. Elementary, my dear Watson. Leslie Howard's son, Ronald, played him on a 1954 TV series. Let's hear it, player one. <laughs> That's right, way to go. All right, let's get back into this. Player one has control of the... Johann Strauss Jr. conducted the Blue Danube Waltz publicly for the first time at a February 1867 concert in this city. We're talking about Vienna. Player one, pick again. Dating from medieval times, Gamlastan, Old Town, is the cradle of this Scandinavian capital. Here's what we wanted. Stockholm. We return to you, player one. Chisago is a county in this state, as is Hennepin. It's player two. <laughs> right you are. <laughs> player two, where do we start? Orbiting at about 67 million miles, it's the second planet from the sun. Let's hear it, player two. <laughs> hey, <you're right. laughs> player two, choose again. In this 1852 work, Eliza makes a harrowing escape across a frozen river from a slave trader named Halley. Here's the correct response. Uncle Tom's Cabin. Player two, pick again. By clinging to the belly of a ram, this mythological figure escaped from the cave of the Cyclops. Let's hear it, player two. <laughs> you again, player two. Henri Charrier recounted his numerous escape attempts from French prisons in South America in this work. Player three? <laughs> yep. A lot of clues, a lot of categories, player three. Make In the Deerslayer, this character escapes from the Hurons when Chingachgook helps to free him. Here's the response we were looking for. Natty Bumpo. You get to pick again, Player 3. This Secretary of State, whose first name is from a musical term, had originally planned to be a concert pianist. Okay, Player 2. <laughs> right. Where do we begin, Player 2? Pangloss keeps his incorrigible optimism intact when he escapes an incompetent hangman's noose in this satire. Player three? Yeah! Good. <laughs> Player three, you start us off. Shortly after her disappearance, her publisher, husband George Putnam, released Last Flight, containing her diaries. Player two. <sighs> nope. Anyone else want to hazard a guess on this? Yes, player three. Oh. Anyone else? Here's the correct response. 
Amelia Earhart. You again, player three. The Moses of her people, she helped hundreds of slaves escape along the Underground Railroad. It's player one. Player one, where do we start? She met her beloved teacher, Ann Sullivan, in 1887. Here is what we wanted. Helen Keller. Player one, you pick again, please. This first American woman in space heads a company geared to girls who are interested in science and math. Let's hear it, player two. Good for you. <laughs> player two, where do we start? A series of nightmares that C.S. Lewis had about these animals inspired him to write his first Narnia book. Let's hear it, player three. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> Player three, you're in command of the board as we continue. Right? This future U.S. First Lady went to England to cover Queen Elizabeth II's coronation for the Washington Times Herald. Here's the response we were looking for. Jacqueline Kennedy. Player three, choose again. Its moon, Ganymede, is the largest in the solar system. Let's hear it, player three. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we return to you, player three. Answer. <laughs> we have a daily double. You are in the lead right now, player three. Please select your wager. All right, here's your clue. The least dense planet in the solar system. It would actually float if you could find a big enough tub to put it in. You have maintained your lead. Way to go. We return to you, player three. In 2005, NASA experimented with a low-pressure greenhouse to grow plants on this carbon dioxide-rich planet. It's player three. Sorry, that's wrong. Anyone else want to hazard a guess on this? Okay, player two. Right you are. Player two, you start. This actor hit the top 40 with the song Moonlight Swim. A few years later, he went psycho. Okay, player two. Right you are. <laughs> player two, choose again. Cary Grant's wife, Betsy Drake, survived the 1956 sinking of this ocean liner. Okay, player one. Anyone else want to hazard a guess on this? Yes, player three? Right. <laughs> and the $2,000 clue? In 1781, it became the first planet discovered in modern times. Here is what we wanted. Uranus. Good game. All of you will continue on to play Final Jeopardy when we return. Here comes the Final Jeopardy players. The category is this. Word history. So, what's your wager? And 
the clue reads, This term for a deadly substance may derive from the name of a love goddess. Let's see your response. And that will lose oh. you. What did you put as your response? How much do you add to your total with that correct response? And your response? And this correct response will add how much to your score? Congratulations, <laughs> player three. You're the winner. Thanks for playing, everybody. See you next time.